Hey everyone, I'm Gnix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So not all that long ago I made a video talking about how you can make good looking materials for your games by simply using noise, because Godot actually allows you to create noise textures which you can customise and use for whatever texture related purpose it may be, including regular albedo textures and even normal maps for your materials as well. But one thing which you might not know is that you can even create some good looking artworks using noise as well. In my last tutorial talking about noise, I don't go too in depth, but today I want to go over more of the properties in the noise textures since I want to show you guys today how you can use Godot's noise textures in order to make some good looking paintings for your games. So let's say for example you want to make an art gallery or just have some artworks hanging up in a house scene. Well, Godot's noise is pretty good for creating artworks to use for that purpose. So anyways, let's get right into it. Alrighty, so here I am in a brand new scene. I've just got a quad mesh which I'm going to be using as an example today. So on my quad mesh, I'm going to go into the geometry section here, material override, and I'm going to create a new material for my quad mesh. Then we're going to go down to the albedo texture section where it says empty. And then uh, you just want to go down to here where it says noise texture 2D, and this will create some new noise for us. So at first it will be pink, but that's because we need to actually create the noise now. So if we actually click onto our noise texture, and then we go to where it says noise, uh, just click on where it says new fast noise light, and boom, now we have some noise. So there is a bunch of customization we can do with this. So the first thing obviously is the width and height. So this determines the dimensions of your noise. So the smaller you have it, you know, obviously the less resolution it's going to be. The, uh, the higher you have it, the higher resolution it's going to be. So this is basically the resolution of your noise texture. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to set it back to the standard 512 by 512, but you guys can do whatever you like, of course. So if we actually go down to where it says color ramp here, we click on empty and then we go new gradient. As you can see, that now creates a color ramp for our noise. So if we click onto the color ramp, you can actually, you know, change up these colors here. So if I click onto the black here, and then I click onto the black square, I can now change what this uh, end color is. So for this tutorial, I'm going to change it to red. And then with this end one here, I'm going to change it to black. And yeah, there's, pretty, there's a lot of, you know, cool sorts of different color combinations you can do. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can even do transparency as well, in case you didn't know. So um, if I actually go down to the transparency here, and then I go alpha, so I set it to alpha. If I then go back onto my noise texture, and I change one of these uh, color ramps here to be transparent, as you can see, it is now transparent. So yeah, that is pretty cool. It's pretty cool that Godot does that. So let's just go change this back to normal since I won't be using transparency today, but again, you guys can if you want to. So uh, with my color ramp here, I am going to make some changes to it, you know, just add in some colors that I would like to use for this artwork as I that I'm using as an example in this tutorial today. So if you click onto anywhere in your color ramp, you know, like the middle here, for example, that will create a new color that you can now edit. So if I now click onto this, I can now change this middle color here to whatever I like. So I could change it to white, for example. So now I have white, red, and black. If I click here, I can now add a new color. I might change this to like a fluoro green or something. There we go, like a very bright green. And then I'm gonna change this one over here to a blue. So yeah, as you can see, this is already starting to look like a bit of an abstract artwork in a way. Uh, you can move your colors however you like as well, so however much space you want your colors to take up, you can just move these colors here so then they're either taking up more or less space, depending on whatever you like. So uh, yeah. So yeah, that's how you mess around with the color ramp. Oh, and also if you're creating a normal map for your uh, texture as well, you can just mark it as a normal map. Now of course this isn't, this isn't going to be a normal map, so I am going to disable this. However, if you do want to add a normal map, you know, you just go down to this normal map section, enable it, add a noise texture, then you can just enable as normal map, and boom, then you have a good looking normal map for your material as well. So if we go down to the noise section here where it says fast noise light, if we click onto this, as you can see, we now have some more options here. So first up, we have the noise type. So this will change how the noise looks. So we have simplex, then simplex smooth, which is a more smoother version of simplex. 
Then we got cellular, so this can actually create a cool look. If we actually turn up the frequency on this, because you can change up the frequency as well, uh, you can actually see that we get some cool looking patterns depending on what the frequency is. So uh, yeah, if I actually remove a few of these color ramps here, as you can see, it now has, you know, this really, really weird, cool look here. So yeah, even with just the red and black, it looks pretty cool. But yeah. So yeah, that's what a cellular noise looks like. Let's add those back now. And then we have Perlin noise, which is very similar to Simplex Smooth. And then we have Value Cubic, and then we have Value. So yeah, they're all the different noise types that you can mess around with. I think for this tutorial, I'm going to use Cellular, since I do like the sort of pattern that provides. And uh, again, you can also mess around with the frequency as well. So if you want to turn this down even more or up even more, you can do that if you want to. So yeah, I'm probably going to leave this at 0 0.01 for now. And then you have your offset. So this basically, you know, changes the offset of your noise. So if you want to do that, you can. And then we have uh, the fractal section here, so this allows you to change uh, certain other things. So we go non. As you can see, it now has this really weird uh, blobby circle look. Then we have FBM, uh, rigid, and ping pong. So yeah, there's a bunch of uh, different fractal types you can change there. Then we can change the octaves. So again, this makes things, you know, look a bit, you know, weirder or cooler, depending on how you set it to. So a lower value makes things look a bit more smoother. As you can see here, we can also change the, uh, I don't really know how to pronounce this word, but I will try um, the lacquer, the lacinarity, the lacinarity or the lacinarity, something like that. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong there. But anyways, we can change this value to whatever we like as well. So uh, yeah, there's a bunch of cool different uh, options here. So the more you uh, turn this option up here, it actually makes things look a bit more rougher in a way. And uh, oh, if we turn it up to 10, now everything looks like little cells. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so we can get some pretty cool uh, looks here depending on how you change up these options. You can also change up the gain. So this sort of just changes up how... Uh, you know, it just changes up the gain. I don't really know how to describe it, huh? But it, it does, like, you know, add a really cool, you know, little pattern. You know, it basically just affects the pattern, changes it up how you like. So, yeah. So, here I am just, you know, changing up the uh, the gain. So, I guess, um, in a way, the gain, it sort of, like, separates these cells in a way and makes them look more separate. But, yeah. So, I'm going to change that to 1 for now. And then we have the weighted strength, so this sort of, you know, uh, changes how things are as well. Oh, and by the way, something which I forgot to mention as well. If you ever want a further explanation of how uh, certain, you know, uh, properties work, you can just hover over the name of the property, like with this one here, for example, and you can actually read off how it works, and then you know what it's actually doing. Uh, so here with the uh, fractal lacinarity, for example, again, however you pronounce that, it says frequency multiply between subsequent octaves. Increasing this value results in higher octaves, producing noise with finer details and the rougher appearance. So yeah, and then we have the octaves here, which says the number of noise layers that are sampled to get the final value for the fractal noise types. So yeah, and then with the type, what it says here, is it says the method for combining octaves into a fractal. So then we have uh, our cellular option here. We can change, uh, you know, the distance, as it's called. Ooh. But yeah, it's really fun messing around with all these noise options, as I said, because you can actually get some really cool looking, neat, like, abstract artworks with it. Then we have this, ooh, look at this. This, this is... I haven't messed around with this value yet, that's why I'm like, you know, sort of surprised, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's pretty cool messing around with all this stuff. And look at this, distance add, distance to add actually gives off this very, um, like, I guess you could say a native, uh, native sort of painting, you know, like a sort of indigenous kind of painting. If you change up the colors on this, then you could make it look very indigenous, but yeah. 
yeah, you guys probably get what I mean. Like, it looks very old and indigenous, you know? Like, there's a bunch of different customization you can do with these noise to uh, get whatever you like. There's also domain warp here, which um, I'm not too sure what domain warp is. If enabled, another f fast noise light instance is used to warp the space, resulting in a distort resulting in a distortion of the noise. So yeah, I guess this, um, you know, is just meant to distort noise. I think it actually does look a pretty nice, pretty nice. Uh, you can change up the, uh, the fractal type here, all that sort of stuff. There's, you know, again, a bunch of different options to mess around here, uh, when it comes to the noise. But, uh, yeah, so here we have, uh, one little kind of painting, I guess you could say. I guess this could be called like a, you know, sort of like an indigenous kind of painting. Something which I'm going to do with the color ramp is I'm going to actually add black into in between each color here. You guys will see why soon. Oh. I just want to see how it looks like this. Oh, I accidentally just added in a double black. I mean, there we go. And boom. I actually think that looks alright with, um, with black in between each color. I think that adds a nice little look to it. Another thing which I actually forgot to show you guys is um, on the color ramp, if you go down to the interpolation, into the interpolation, if you go down to the interpolation mode, you can actually change the uh, interpolation, the interpolation mode here. So right now it's currently set to linear, but if we set it to constant, it now changes it up. So as you can see here with how the colors are displayed on the color ramp now, it's different, you know, it's not like a sort of like a fade, as if it's like a gradient, you know, it's almost like, you know, it's just like, you know, the colors are very, you know, they're just very together, like they're not lit, like they're not smoothing into each other, you know, they're just, you know, it's almost like they're fighting against each other, like they're very opposing, if you know what I mean. So if we actually um, change up how our noise is here, so let's change up the domain warp, let's get rid of this. Um, as you can see here, the way our noise looks now is a lot different. So let's actually change up um, the the lacunarity there. So as you can see now, the way our noise looks is quite different. You know, like um, the colors aren't fading into each other. So if we change up the linear, or if we change from linear to constant, as you can see, the colors are very opposing of each other. You know what I mean? Uh, let's change up the uh, the noise here to simplex smooth. So as you can see now, we have a much more like very uh, like modern abstract looking painting here uh, when we do set the mode to constant. So yeah, I do like setting the interpolation mode to constant because I do think that it does have a very nice uh, modern abstract looking painting look to it. Again, we can also change up these color values here to whatever we like. But uh, yeah, so I am really liking this uh, little sort of painting we've got here now. I actually really, you know, this actually looks really nice. I actually really like the look of this. But yeah, again, you can also change up the seed as well. So you can sort of change up where the colors are and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, usually I like it having set to zero by default, because I think zero just produces the, be the best results. But you can change it to whatever you like, even 69, 420, whatever. So yeah. So anyways guys, that's going to be the end of this video. If you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. In this tutorial today, I just want to basically show you guys, um, you know, all the sorts of different options that I didn't show in my last video to do with noise, you know. So yeah, um, overall, there is a lot of customization here. You can get some really cool looking paintings, as you can see right now with what I'm doing. Um, this is a really cool looking painting pattern, I think. But yeah, so anyways guys, that's going to be in this video. Thanks again for watching, be sure to continue playing around with the noise yourself, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all next time, and bye bye